Hello students, let's do fractions, exercise 3e. Exercise 3e is on page number 59. We are with question 15. Shyam bought a refrigerator for 5000 rupees. He paid one tenth of the price in cash and the rest in 12 equal monthly installments. How much had he to pay each month? Okay, so let's understand this problem. The Shyam bought a refrigerator for 5000 rupees. He didn't pay the whole amount. He paid only one tenth of that amount in cash and the rest that means there is some money remaining from this isn't it that he paid in 12 equal monthly installments that means he paid it over 12 months in small amounts now how much had he to pay each month now this is what we are going to find out so let's begin by saying cost of the refrigerator given to us is 5000 rupees then Amount Shyam paid. Now, how much did he pay? According to the question, he has paid one tenth of 5000 rupees. Okay, so he didn't pay the whole amount, he just paid one tenth of it. Now, we need to find out how much is one tenth of 5000. So, let's do that. So, this is one tenth of means multiplication, and 5000 becomes 5000 by one. Now, it's multiplication of fractions. We can cancel. I can cancel a zero from the denominator and a zero from the numerator. Now I can multiply my numerators. 1 into 500 is 500. Denominator 1 into 1 is 1. So 500 by 1 is 500. So the amount that Shyam paid in the beginning is 500 rupees. So the cost of the refrigerator is 5000 rupees. Amount Shyam paid is 500. Now what is remaining from this amount? Let's see what the remaining amount is because he paid the remaining amount in installment. So we need to find out what the remaining amount is. To find the remaining amount, we should take the cost of the refrigerator and subtract the amount that he paid from it. So let's minus from 5,000 rupees, this is the cost of the refrigerator. We're going to minus 500 rupees, which he paid. So let's do that, 500, 5,000 minus 500. 0, 0, we borrow here. 10 minus 5 is 5 and this is 4. So, the remaining amount is 4,500 rupees. Now, this is the amount that he paid in 12 equal monthly installments, 4,500. So, if he had to pay it in 12 months, how much did he pay each month? That is the question. So, number of installments is 12. Now, amount he had to pay each month will be, we take the remaining amount that is 4,500 rupees and when we divide it by 12, we will know how much he paid each month. So, let's take 4,500 and let's divide it by 12. 12 ones are 12, 12 twos are 24, 12 threes are 36, 12 fours are 48, we can't use. So, let's write 12 threes are 36. Let's subtract here 3. 15 minus 6 is 9 and bring down 10, so that's 90. Now a number close to 90 will be 12 sevens are 84. 12 sevens are 84 minus, now again we have to borrow from here. So this becomes 8 and 10. 10 minus 4 is 6, bring down the next 0, 60. 12 into 5 is 60. 12 fives are 60. So we've got our quotient, our quotient is 375. That means the amount that he had to pay each month was 375 rupees. Question 16. A lamp post has half of its length in mud and one third of its length in water. Okay, so half of its length means 1 by 2. So that's the fraction. And one third of its length in water. Now we have to find out what fraction of its length is above the water. Okay, now here we don't know the total length of the lamp post. So whenever we don't have a known quantity like that, when we don't have a quantity like that in fraction, we consider it to be 1. So here, let the length of the lamp post be 1 meter. Now, the length of the lamp post in mud is half of this length, isn't it? So that is 1 by 2, this is a fraction. Then the length of the lamp post in water is 1 by 3. So one third. So we have the length of lamp post in mud, 1 by 2, length of the lamp post in water, 1 by 3. Now, the length of the lamp post above the water is what we need to find out. So now the length of the 
lamp post, the total length is so much, below the water is so much. So if we subtract this amount after adding the sum from the total amount, we will know how much of it is above water. Okay. So here what we are going to do is we are going to take 1 meter, which we have considered as the length of the lamp post, minus, now we are going to add up 1 by 2 and 1 by 3. So this is 1 meter minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3. This is the length of the lamp post in mud. This is the length of lamp post in water. We are going to add up these two. So let's do that addition. So 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3. The denominators are different. We have to find the LCM. So 2 and 3, we'll start with 2, 1 and bring down 3. Continue with 3, 1 and 1. So the LCM is 2 into 3. That is 6. Now let's use 6 as the common denominator here. First fraction is 1 by 2, denominator is 2, 2 3s are 6, so multiply this also by 3. 1 3s are 3 plus, for the next one, 3 2s are 6, so multiply this also by 2. 1 2s are 2, so 3 plus 2 is 5, denominator is 6. So here the length of the lamp post above the water will be 1 meter minus 5 by 6. Now let's work out this. Now here 1, we can give it the denominator 1. So here the LCM will be 6. So let's go to the first fraction, 1 into 6. So multiply this also by 6. 1 into 6 is 6 minus second fraction, denominator 6 itself. So 6 ones are 6, 5 ones are 5, 6 minus 5. This is 1 by 6. So what is a fraction? They've asked us fraction of its length above the water. The fraction of its length above the water is 1 by 6. This is the fraction. Now let's go to the second part of the question. It says if 3 1 by 3 meter of the lamp post is above the water, find the whole length of the lamp post. So we have found the fraction of the lamp post above the water. Now we've been told that this is the length of the lamp post above the water, we have to find the whole length. So length of the lamp post above water which we have which we have been given here is 3 1 by 3 meters. This is given to us and we have found that 1 6 of the lamp post is above water, isn't it? This is a fraction that means 1 6 of the lamp post above water is equal to 3 1 by 3 meters. This is the fraction and this is a fraction and this is the actual length. So let's find out how much this is. That is 1 by 6 of the length of the lamp post. Of the length of the lamp post. So that is the total length is equal to 3 1 by 3 meters. So that means if we have to find this, this is 1. 1 by 6 of means into and we are talking about the length of the lamp post. This is equal to 3, 1 by 3 meters. So, if we have to find length, if we have to find only the length, what do we say? We leave length here on this side and on the other side we leave 3, 1 by 3 as it is and we carry this from the left hand side to the right hand side. So, we are transposing it from the left to the right. So, when we do that, since it is multiplication here, when it goes to the other side, it becomes division. So divided by 1 by 6. So now to find the length, we have to do this division. So let's do this division. First, let's convert 3, 1 by 3. So this becomes 3, 3 is 9 plus 1, 10. So this is 10 by 3 divided by 1 by 6. That means 10 by 3, division becomes multiplication, 1 by 6 becomes 6 by 1 and we can cancel 3 and 6, 3 2's are 6. So 10 2's are 20, 20 by 1. So this is what we get here. Now that means we have found the total length of the lamp post to be 20 meters, 20 by 1 is 20 meters. Question 17. I spent three-fifths of my savings and still have 2,000 rupees left. What were my savings? Okay, so let's begin this by writing the first step. Let my savings be 
Now you can write rupee 1 or you can write x because it's an unknown quantity because they're asking us what were my savings. So let my savings be x and then here it says I spent three-fifths of my savings. So amount spent is three-fifths of x that is 3 by 5 into x. So 3 by 5 into x will be 3x by 5. So the amount he spent is, the amount I spent is 3x by 5. Now here, the next thing is amount that is left. So what will the amount that is left be? Now initially, how much did I have? I had x, x rupees. In that I spent so much. So if I minus these two, I will know how much is left, isn't it? So let me write that. So the initial amount is x and the amount that I spent is 3x by 5. So if I minus these two, I will know how much is the amount that is left. But if you look at the question carefully, it's already given to us. They're already telling us what is the amount that is left. So this is equal to 2000 rupees. This is equal to 2000 rupees. So now all we have to do is find the value of x and x is savings. So if we find the value of x, we'll know what my savings were. Okay, so let's work this out. Now this has become a linear equation. So we are going to solve this like we solve linear equations. So let's begin by writing x by 1 minus 3x by 5 is equal to 2000. Now let's work out only this portion, x by 1 minus 3x by 5, let's solve it. Let's work it out here. So in the working column, I'm going to write x by 1 minus 3x by 5. So this is subtraction of fractions. Denominators are different. So we have to find the LCM. And since the denominators are 1 and 5, 5 will be the LCM. So now let's go to the first fraction, x by 1. Denominator is 1. So 1 into 5 is 5. So x into 5 is 5x. So this is 5x minus, go to the next one, 5. 5 into 1 is 5. So multiply this also by 1. 3x into 1 is 3x. So now minus the two numerators because they are like, uh, here you can see they are like terms because they have x together. So you can subtract 5 minus 3 is 2. 2x by 5. So that means 2x by 5 is equal to 2000. That means to find the value of 2x now, what do we have to do? 2x is equal to 2000. Now we are going to transpose this 5 from the left hand side to the right hand side. So when we transpose it from the left to the right, in the left, on the left side it is division. When it comes to the right, it's going to change to multiplication. So this is into 5. That means 2x is equal to, multiply these two, 5 twos are 10 and add the three zeros. 1, 2, 3. 2x two is equal to 10,000. So what is the value of x? x is equal to 10,000 divided by 2. How did we get division? Here you can see 2x means 2 into x. So it is multiplication, but when it goes to the right hand side, it becomes division. That's how it's become 10,000 by 2. Now we can cancel. Two fives are 10 and we can add these zeros. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So what is the, uh, um, here the savings that we have got here? 5,000 rupees. So we've got our answer. The savings is 5,000 rupees. 5,000 rupees. Because we have found the value of x and right to the beginning we said, let my savings be x. So we found the value of x to be 5000, that means savings is 5000 rupees. Question 18. In a school, four-fifths of the children are boys. If the number of girls is 200, find the number of boys. Let's begin by saying, let the total number of children be x. You can also consider this to be 1. Because in fractions, in when we have to take the total number or a full part, we say 1. Or you can take it as x. Then the number of boys given here is 4 fifths of the children. That is 4 by 5 of x. That is 4 by 5 into x. So this will be 4 into x is 4x. 
by 5. So the number of boys is 4x by 5. And then what else? Number of girls has been given to us as 200. So now we have x as the total number of children. 4x by 5 as the number of boys. 200 as the number of girls. Now we have to find the number of boys. We only have it in the fraction form. We need to get the number like this. We know girls are 200. We need to find how many boys there are. So for that, what we do is, if you take the total number of children in this class, in the school, and you number minus the number of boys from it, you will get the number of girls. Isn't it? Take the total number of children in the school, minus the number of boys, you'll get the number of girls. So here, let's substitute. Now, total number of children is x, we said. Minus number of boys is 4x by 5. We are substituting all the values. This is equal to number of girls is given to us as 200. So x minus 4x by 5 is equal to 200. Now we are going to find the value of x. That is we need to find the total number of children and then only we can find the number of boys. So we have to solve this part first. So let's work out this part. So here this will be x by 1. Now the denominator 1 and 5 will give us the LCM 5 itself, isn't it? Now let's look at the first denominator 1. 1 into 5 is 5. So multiply this also by 5. 5x into 5 is 5x minus here we have 5. 5 into 1 is 5. So multiply 4x into 1. 4x into 1 is 4x. This is equal to 200. Okay, now this is in the form of an equation. So let's continue here. 5x minus 4x is x, 1x or x. x by 5 is equal to 200. That means if we have to find the value of x alone, it will be 200 into 5. Now how did I get that? Here I have 5 on the left hand side, isn't it? I'm going to remove it from there and I'm going to put it on the right. Now on the left hand side, it's division x by 5 means 5 is the denominator, isn't it? It's division. So when it moves to the right hand side, it becomes multiplication. That's how I got 200 into 5. Now let me multiply this. When I multiply this, what do I get? 5 into 2 is 10. So multiply these two, 10, and then add the two zeros. So I get 1000. That means what have I found? I have found the total number of children. The total number of children, I have found it to be because we said in the beginning let it be x and we just found out what the value of x is. x or the total number of children is 1000. Now our main question is find the number of boys and here it says 4 by 5 of the children are boys and we found the number of children. So let's continue to find the number of boys. So the total number of children we said is 1000. We found the number of children in that the number of boys is 4 fifth, 4 fifth of 1000. Okay, so let's work this out. 4 fifth of 1000 means 4 by 5 into 1000. Now let's cancel what we can here. This one will have the denominator 1. This is 5 ones are 5, 5 twos are 10, then 2 zeros. Okay, so now we multiply the numerators. So when you multiply the numerators, 4 twos are 8 plus 2 zeros by 1, which is 800. So we have found the number of boys to be 800. We will stop with this for now, children. In our next video, we will continue with the remaining questions. Thank you, children.